had a question about a kid named J.J. McCarthy. Some of you, if you're a hardcore recruiting fan or a Michigan fan, you know the name. If not, you may not. But anytime we have a hyper-nuanced question, I try and expand it to where it's relevant to you if you're an Ohio State fan or a North Carolina fan. And so that's what I wanted to do with this question. So a couple of weeks ago, I was asked by Butch in the Twitter inbox, follow me on Twitter if you don't already, at Late Kick Josh. And he said, essentially, is the hype real surrounding J.J. McCarthy? So who is he? For those of you who don't know, he's a 6'2", 195-pound, five-star pro-style quarterback out of New Jersey. Michigan has recruited the New Jersey area very well. Uh, he's got a very, very good arm. He's our number 15 overall composite player in the 24-7 sports composite. He is a Michigan commitment. This is not a kid who's on campus. It's for the upcoming cycle, the 2021 cycle. So I told Butch at the time, I could just read our scouting report right off a computer screen on camera for you, and I could pass that off as an answer. But I wanted to do some due diligence. So I reached out to a couple of our national recruiting guys and regional recruiting guys, and I wanted to ask about J.J. McCarthy. I need to know about him as well. So I asked, who is he? And consistently, the feedback that you got from people close to Michigan and then people who have scouted him in person is, big game, you can count on him. He's had a lot of clutch moments already in his high school career. He's not necessarily a huge mobile threat, but and he's very comparable to Joe Burrow in this way. You can count on him to extend plays. And when plays break down, he's good enough with his legs and good enough with his vision to use his lower half to stay upright, and use his upper half to keep his focus and vision downfield. So he's a guy who can extend plays. He's got an elite mind and an elite arm. Those are most of the boxes that you want checked. The only real concern that, as far as I can tell, that they have keeping him from being a freshman All-American is, is he strong enough? I mean, is he, is he wiry or is he built physically to handle the rigors of a 12-game season, a full Big Ten schedule? And if he's got that, then he checks all the other boxes. And you got to figure, even if he comes on campus and doesn't have it immediately, I mean, these folks specialize. They've been doing it for a million years. They can put 15 or 20 pounds on you. So they will do that. And so it's not an if, but it's a when with J.J. McCarthy. But is he worth the hype? That was the question. Because you can have all the tools in the world. You go to the wrong program, doesn't matter. You're either washing out or you're transferring in a couple of years. So my answer as to whether this kid is worth the hype is directly tied to Josh Gaddis. Is Josh Gaddis worth the hype? You remember Gaddis was the wide receivers coach at Bama, and then Jim Harbaugh plucks him and makes him his offensive coordinator in Ann Arbor. At the time, a lot of people were not necessarily in tears to see him leave Alabama. They didn't think that he was equipped to be a successful offensive coordinator. Very mixed results year one. They certainly did not hit the ground running at Michigan. I think they showed a lot of promise towards the end of the year, but the jury's to me, still kind of out. I think that's fair to say. If Josh Gaddis were sitting right here, I think it would be fair to say to him, I think the jury is still out on whether long-term you're going to turn Michigan into some prolific offensive team. If you're being honest, I don't think he could argue with that. Now, here's the whole point. If Josh Gaddis is legit, and if I'm not big on judging teams' future based always on their past, Michigan has not been prolific offensively. That doesn't mean they can't be. They just haven't been. Okay? But you're not always chained to what your former identity has been. They've never made a hire. Jim Harbaugh's never made a hire like he did with Josh Gaddis. If Gaddis is legit, if he's worth the hype, then absolutely J.J. McCarthy is worth the hype. But ultimately, what you have to do, if I am a high four-star wide receiver living in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, is you've got to make that block M attractive to me. And the only way to make it attractive is results. Put points up light up the scoreboard, and make it feasible, make it reasonable. I mean, give me an argument, a legitimate reason to go up there and play in 25-degree weather. If you couldn't recruit kids north of the Mason-Dixon line, Ohio State would never be able to do it. It's possible, but at the end of the day, if you're not recruiting elite perimeter skill from the south, you're dead in the water. If you're up where Michigan is, you're dead in the water. People scoff at this. I don't care. Facts are facts, guys. you got to recruit perimeter talent from the South. That doesn't mean every now and then an elite wide receiver won't come your way out of Minneapolis or maybe Detroit or Ohio. Yeah, it can happen. Cincinnati puts out some good kids. I'm talking about where the entire reservoir of talent is. I'm not looking at a puddle here and there. Go to the reservoir. Guys, I don't know if you realize this. 
the University of Alabama is in a state that borders the Gulf of Mexico, even they go further south than where they are. Jerry Judy, Calvin Ridley, Amari Cooper, all these dudes who've been getting pumped into the league, what city do you think they're from? They're all from the same area. It's like they grew up in the same backyard down in Miami. Alabama's got no problem saying we got to go down there. Ohio State's got no problem saying we got to go down there. And Ohio State gets those kids, by the way. It gets pretty cold in Columbus, Ohio, too. So don't use the cold weather as an excuse. Don't use the academics as an excuse because the bottom line is wide receivers aren't stupid. Every wide receiver that is worth his weight in gold is not stupid. You can get kids in class. If you get defensive linemen in school, why can't you get wide receivers in school? You got to be attractive. You haven't been attractive enough for them to come up there. And everything else is kind of just excuse making. So follow the chain here. If Josh Gaddis is worth the hype, that means J.J. McCarthy will be given every opportunity to prove his mettle. I ultimately think if he stays healthy, he will be worth the hype. And then all of a sudden, early December, mid-December, we're getting towards that early signing date, and there's Michigan right in the running for a receiver out of East Texas and a receiver out of South Central Florida. And then you say, whoa, well, these, these players didn't used to give Michigan the time of day. you got to knock down the barrier, though. You got to break the dam. You got to land a kid from down there. I'm talking about a big one now. You got to land a kid like Jerry Judy or a kid like Amari Cooper. Once one of them goes, then several of them will go. But you got to give South Florida kids, you got to give East Texas kids, Alabama kids, Nico Collins notwithstanding, of course, Georgia kids. You got to break down that barrier. You got to have a stream of Southern perimeter talent moving north, or else it doesn't matter what kind of quarterback you have. I mean, he's only good as the guys he can throw it to. Tua to Tungavailoa, how good is he last year if none of his receivers run a sub 4-7? Probably still good, not nearly as good as he was. So, I mean, I, I, I appreciate the question. I hope he's worth it. I hope he's worth the hype. But he alone is not going to decide whether he's worth the hype.